Hello and welcome to Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Andy Taylor and joining me today is Nick Elliott, Graham Marshall and Henry Lewin Titt. Welcome back to the show, Henners. Coming up on this week's show. Like, you are a bit of an asshole on the touchline. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a trick question. If Voldemort starts calling him out and this lad's getting 3 million views, for me, I'm fuming. So I'm like, yeah. I'm look, who, look, who are you calling yeah. me out? You never hear Southampton fans going, Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> Hampshire. Do you know what I mean? Like okay, right, now we have a picture round. So all you at home will see a picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you. The Chelsea hype train came to an abrupt end this week as they lost to Everton and Wolves. All their wins have come up against bottom half opposition and they've not done very well against top half opposition either. Just like their gaffer, let's be frank. Lads, are Chelsea actually even in the title race anymore, given what we've seen this past week? I think that they probably still are just because it is so close at the top. No one's really put their foot on the gas and gone, this is my season, I'm going to take control of the league. But I just, I think you just love to, love to see how much they're struggling to score, to create chances when the amount of money they spent on attacking players. You know, you've got Werner, Ziyech, Havertz, like people talking about how you know they could be playing like free flowing football at yeah. Liverpool and scoring goals for fun. Well, between them last season for their you know before they came to Chelsea, it was sort of like nearly fifty goals between them, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've not seen that that sort of link up. I know it's hard to to do that, but I think it comes back to that thing about Lampard, where you think at the moment he's just putting a lot of talented players on the pitch and really hoping it will come together. What's the the tactics for for Chelsea? And I mean, obviously that will come through the season, so we can't necessarily totally count them out yet. What, what do you reckon, Nick? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult because they've got that thing where they are, they're not getting results against top half and they're beating bottom half teams. And a lot of people think to see that as a really big thing. And yeah, you can't win the title doing that. But like a lot of people underestimate how the benefit of actually just regularly being the bottom half. And like if you can avoid defeat or avoid dropping points, like if you can beat <laughs> the bottom half home and away, it's a lot of points. Well, City, City drop points. Uh, Liverpool drop points against exactly, drop yeah. points. I said, it, well, you only have to look at Arsenal to see, you know, if, like, if, you, if you start struggling against those bottom half teams, how bad it can go. And actually, if you look at the table now, it's actually quite amazing that Chelsea are points wise so close to the top, given that if, if someone said they haven't beaten top half opposition, they've only scored four goals against the top half this season, you think, oh, they must be mid table or something like that, but they're not. They actually are in the hunt. So there's a lot to be said for kind of being a bit of a flat track bully. It's like, with, it's like goal scorers, you know, someone's always says like, oh, well, someone like, I don't know, Lukaku's, for example. It's like, oh, well, you know what? He gets all these goals against the bottom half. It's like, well, someone's got a score. Yeah. Like, you, have, yeah. you still yeah. have to win those games. Yeah, if yeah. Like, and that's, it's like, oh, it's easy to win those games. Yeah, it's easy if you've got a striker who's so good that he's always scoring against the bottom half. OK, let's hold fire on that chat for a few minutes as it's time for this week's Four to Score Challenge. Our sponsor, Betway, has set us a little refereeing challenge this weekend in honour of Mike Dean's 11 cards from the weekend. We're going to have four rounds of questions and each panellist will have a yellow card and a red card. Each colour will be designated to a specific answer. And they're going to be blindfolded, so they can't be influenced by each other's decision. Uh, uh, that's, that's how it uh, looks like Mike D refs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, question number one. Okay. Who has more red cards in the Premier League, Roy Keane or Patrick Vieira? Yellow for Keane, red for Vieira. Oh, okay. Tough one. Okay, you've all gone Vieira, and it is Vieira. Oh. Mm. Right. Same number as uh, Richard Dunn, I think. Oh. Uh, <laughs> our, old our old friend. Our old friend. Roy Keane has That's seven right reds, here. Patrick Vieira has eight. Oh. Okay. Close. Who gave more red cards last season? Mike Dean, yellow, or Anthony Taylor, red? Oh, feels like a trick question. Mm. You've all got Anthony Taylor, and that would be correct. Ah, oh, uh, yeah, I felt like that was a okay. sneaky one. True or false, there have been more penalties given this season already than there were in the entire 01-02 season. Uh, yellow for true, red for false. Interesting season to have gone for. <laughs> gonna... Surely. Graz and Nick have gone true. Hennes has gone false. It is true. Oh, bold though. Yeah. So if you'd have been right, you'd have Hennes been out on your own. Off. 
Okay, right, now we have a picture round. So all you at home will see a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna magically show these guys as well. Was Jamie Carragher sent off for this, yes or no? Red for yes, yellow for no. Uh, I think, mm. Yep, it's all correct. Uh, he didn't get sent off for that. Ooh, Carragher just got a yellow though. card for that. Oh, and another cliffhanger. Stick around to see who wins this week's four to score challenge later in the show. But for now, back to the football chat. What are we judging Frank on this year? What is success for him? I mean, right now looking at him in the position in terms of the points they're on, how far they're off on the top. I mean, if you'd have said that to the start of the season, they'd probably taken it. So is it a bit of a bandwagon if we start you know, slagging him off after two losses? It's more like um, you look at kind of tactically, it's like, does he know what his best lineup is? Obviously, he's had players coming in and out with injury and things like that. But you can look at results, but you can also look at how the team's playing and how they're performing, especially against when he has to come up against more kind of tactically competent teams or tactically aware teams that he hasn't been able to barely score a goal against them. Is that what Chelsea fans are kind of getting annoyed at? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I watched the Wolves Chelsea game. Uh, I just, the only thing about lamps. I've always stated that I love lamps. I like yeah, them. go for a beer with him. You, you've mentioned that. There's a just lot. a few yeah. things creeping in where, so for instance, on the touchline, he tries to be like on a bit of a pedestal. So if someone else is kicking off, he's like, just calm down, just <laughs> calm down. And I'm like, you're the worst for kicking off and making yourself like a bit of a plonker. And he did that with Nuno a few yeah. times. And I was like, Frank, no, no, no. There was a lot of things when he was at Derby, you know, tactically, did he get it right? There was a few question marks last year. I don't know, I just feel like, should we start? I mean, I, just looking at the Wolves game in isolation, Wolves are not very good at the moment. We've got no Jimenez, which is just a huge blow. I mean, we were, we were basically playing with 10 men. The lad up top, the, the generational talent, Sil Fabio Silva. Silva. Yeah. You know, he's, like, he's 18 years old, yeah. playing up top on his own against Chelsea centre halves. It's, it's obviously not easy for the lad, but he literally couldn't hold, hold up a shelf all night. <laughs> and yet, we've still beaten them 2-1. And the excuses were that, I don't know if you mentioned it, that well, yeah, they they're were a bit saying jaded. That Fatigued. Come on. <laughs> They're up against the, the, the smallest squad in the, the league with Wolves, and they're saying that they're jaded. Like, they rotate in most of their team week in, week out. They can take James out and bring Gaspar Lequeta in. They can take Zuma out and bring Rudiger in. Well, it's the thing, I think I might have said it to you before, before the show, but, but like, the, the big teams, the point should be that they are less affected by this fixture congestion. I think we've all agreed that, like, the players are under a lot of pressure at the moment and you know you can decide whether you think they've been you know compensated enough for that to not be a problem for them but Chelsea as a squad surely are better prepared than Wolves and it's the same with all of the big sides so Lampard can't come out after the game and say that that was the main reason he's lost like there, there's enough in their squad to get by you you would think. I think as well like the main front three they probably want to eventually get to is Ziyech, Werner, Pulisic and they haven't actually managed to do that that often by like injuries or rotation. Obviously, Giroud's in really good form, so you can't really justify dropping him. But I still think that front three is what they eventually want to get to. Maybe if, if Giroud stops scoring. Obviously, he deserves to keep his place now. But yeah. once he stops, give that three a proper run and see what they can do. I think that that um, kind of United versus Chelsea narrative is quite interesting as well when you look at how people talk about Van der Beek versus Havertz. And everyone's saying, why isn't Van der Beek playing? Why, why is he sat on the bench? What is Solskjaer doing? And then people are saying, well, our Lampard, oh, he's working habits and you know, he's, he's struggling to perform. I think that like, conversation really points how people look at the two, like, the two oh, there's clubs. No, there's no doubt about it. Lampard gets uh, a free pass on a lot of things in the Premier League, in my opinion. And again, I'm just going personally from, I always see things more clear when they play against my club. I don't know what it is. Because <laughs> I love Lampard and when I watch him, I try and defend him. But when I watch yeah. him against Wolves, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, you are a bit of on the touchline. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is so. He is. He was absolutely kicking off at my. He was <laughs> kicking off at my boys. Yeah. And I was like, Lamps, yeah. I've seen you throw your rattle out the pram when like, I think it was the Liverpool game, and he was got. Well, you having a go at Klopp? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like, don't come across like you're high and mighty, and you don't do that sort of stuff on the touchline. You are all part of the game. Terrible though. for it. All part of the game. Right, we can't move on without mentioning the Man United Leeds derby this weekend. We've got a Man United fan on, and we've definitely got a Leeds fan on. Um, well, firstly, Nick, why is this game so big? Obviously, it's a derby. What, what, what's the history of this fixture? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing, because a, a lot of younger fans or global fans probably won't realise the magnitude of this fixture, because, I mean, it hasn't happened in the league for 16 years or whatever, and there's a whole generation. I mean, even the players involved, like you've got Calvin Phillips and Marcus Rashford, both local lads for their respective teams, probably too young to actually remember 
the proper glory days of it of it happening. But um, I mean, technically, it's the oldest football rivalry because it's basically all about Yorkshire, Lancashire, which goes back to like the Tudors. Tudors yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit of history on the show. It's <laughs> <laughs> about like the War of the Roses. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's effectively what it's bedded in. Yorkshire, Lancashire, very strong sense of place, like county-wise, like. Like Le Leeds fans will chant Yorkshire at games. Like, there's a strong where you wouldn't, you never hear Southampton fans going Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> Hampshire. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't happen. You don't happen yeah. anywhere else. But but like in terms of the actual fixture, I mean, Gary Neville says that going to Ellen Road was more daunting than going to Anfield wow. when he was playing. I think Ryan Giggs said something like, like you don't know what intim intimidation is until you've taken a corner at Ellen Road. Stuff like that. And really? Fer Fer Fergie said that like the games against Liverpool were all about like status. The games against United are all about, uh, against Arsenal, sorry, all about the title race generally in his era, but they, for just unnecessary ferocity and kind of hostility, the games against Leeds were, were kind of the, the toughest sort of thing. So Let's move on to United. We've not had you on the show for a while. No, so I've been talk, hiding. <laughs> talk, talk to me about Man United and where they're at at the moment. I actually think you're being harshly treated. I think you're right in this title race. Yeah, I think we are. I think that... The number one thing is inconsistency. That's what has killed us. That's what's killed us for. It's what killed us under Mourinho as well. But especially under Solskjaer, we are a streaky team. I mean, I don't want to talk about because it's been talked about enough. But uh, can't wait to see the back of Pogba. <laughs> Do you reckon <laughs> that's a bit of a cloud over things? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it just has so much influence on how Solskjaer wants to play because he's under. Pre I feel like he's under so much pressure from the media to play him and get him playing well. That then he tries to you know fit him into the squad. You know we saw against City when we played that diamond, which just didn't really work. He's um, he tries to play him alongside either Fred or McTominay or Matic, and he just doesn't quite work there either. And I just think let's just move on from Pogba, move yeah. on from Mino Rola. Don't need don't need to hear from that rat anymore. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, I, had, I pressed Graz last week for a Spurs end of season prediction. Yep. I got to press you for United's end of season prediction. Realistically, what are we thinking here? Can you win it, for starters? Can you? Can we? Yeah. I think we can. I think that if Rashford and um, Martial start finishing chances and, you know, find, especially, especially Martial, he finds that kind of form in front of goal that he had last season, that, you know, there is a chance. Mm. Win, our, win our game in hand, you know, a couple of points off the top. That is the thing, looking at the table, I think you, and you said it earlier, it's still so close. If you do win that game in hand, it would be ridiculous to not include you in the conversation, no matter how bad they yeah. have been at times. What I will say about this this game, Man United v Leeds, is that I kind of feel like the the like you could almost write the post match report now. Yeah. Like you could just say like and just have two ready, right? So either Leeds win or it's a draw, and it's Bielsa such a genius getting the most out of his while Solskjaer is massively underachieving. Or, and you can pretty much have the same version where it's like, well, look what Bielsa's has got to work. If you're not <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. got to work with, compared to Man United, obviously they should be winning that game. And that, you know, yeah. that might be unfair because, like, to be fair, with Chelsea, a lot of Leeds fans were saying, like, when we lost to Chelsea, like, well, obviously, like, their, you know, one of their players costs the same as our squad. But, like, Chelsea were actually tactically, like, very, very good in that game. Mm. Uh, Cock is out as well. Yeah. A big, you just wanted to say that. Big <laughs> No, he's, he's, he's been a good player this year for you, hasn't he? I mean, he's been pretty good, yeah. You just like to stay cocky out, don't you? Also, no, the I've fact that you then said it was a big blow. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, look, he's, he's, he's been ruled out for a while, hasn't he? So uh, yeah, he two, two months. Yeah. <laughs> cock surgery, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I told you. OK, it's time for the memes. Each week, our panellists submit a meme to the Dream Team Instagram page, and you folks get to vote for your favourite. If you don't already follow us on Instagram, get on over and give us a follow. Right, who's up first? I think it's Nick's, and I, I really like this. It's mine, yeah. yeah. Thoughts? Well, I've, first of all, I've gone away from the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty rogue. Bold. But I was basically, I just watched Real Madrid against Gladbach, I think it was, qualify. Modric is just really good. Uh, next up. Uh, what technically was going to be for Jack. Just a, a funny clip of a teacher going yeah. mental. Seven! Yeah. When's that? Yeah, seven! I don't want to raise my voice and I don't want to get nasty, but if you force me to, I will enforce the rules of the school. I, I've got no it's, idea. It's, but it's it stirred a... nothing in me, I'll be honest. Yeah, didn't do it for you. That's, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Finally, on to Graz's yeah, actual one. Which a lot of the chat has been about whether we keep Spurs players fit. You've got a, you've got a chance if all of those players stay fit. So mm. 
you've got to pick between Harry Kane staying fit and winning the league. No, you don't. Just give, it, give them both. Give them both a little push. OK, let's get to the results. In third place, oh, it's tight between third and second, you know. Oh, I don't like that. In third Basically, place, Graham's come uh, last twice. You yeah. could look at it that way, couldn't you? Uh, it's Jack slash Henry <laughs> slash <laughs> Graz. Slash Graz. <laughs> uh, with 314. Really Which one was low, that for? Really low. Uh, was that for the that was for the the one that didn't stir anything in uh, in yeah, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, Nicole yeah. Hennis, yeah. Or anyone um, else for that matter. The winner is. It's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Mr. Meme is back. Yeah, I mean, first yeah. one for a while. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Mikel Arteta is making history at Arsenal at the moment. They lost to Burnley last weekend for the first time ever in the Premier League. I didn't say it was good history, did I? <laughs> Arsenal's poor form at the moment is making even the most staunch Arteta fan question his role. But, lads, well, I'm going to put it to you. If Arteta does go, is there actually anyone even out there that could do a job better? There's definitely, there's there's definitely managers could. who could probably do it better, but would they? Who would actually take would, the job? Would they take the job? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing at the moment. Yeah. I've got a list of names here, by the way, that oh, are yeah. all whispers Linked. about they could go there. So okay. I'll, before I come on to that, I mean, what are you guys thinking about? If is there anyone out there? Well, it depends, like what's realistic, doesn't it? Because, like, if I was Arsenal, I'd, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd really like to get Hassan Hutel. But is it is it like Southampton are fourth and? Yeah, Arsenal yeah. is 16th or whatever. So, is it realistic that he would he would want to move? You know, and he's doing great things at Southampton. Mm. And I don't know, Allegri is probably the big one, isn't it? That has been touted around for a couple of years. Which, well, which in terms of like, if you're going for just trying to go for someone a bit of pedigree, experience, and move away from that more experimental, young, up and coming manager, then that's probably the way well, to I go. I mean, just just on Allegri though, uh, I think he's won six Serie A titles in the last ten years. Uh, worked with the likes of Ronaldinho, Nesta, Gattuso, obviously some of the players he had at Juventus. Why would he come to 15th, 16th place Arsenal with Mohamed El Nenny in the midfield? <laughs> what, what, why? There's, there's just no, there's really no reason. You singled out El Nenny instead of Jacker. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and Jacker. Yeah. And loads of them. Like, what? There's, there's no reason. I think why I bring this up is that is it just futile Arsenal fans going, get him out, get him out, get him out, when there's just no one out there? You might as well stick with him and hope he might come through it, he somehow salvages a top six out of this season and you go from there. Why on earth get him out? The money involved in getting him out, the money involved getting someone in, especially someone like Allegri, God, no, he'd probably have to make him the most best paid manager in the Premier League to get him in. Well, I think the thing is, is it futile? Uh, yeah, I think it is futile. As I think the situation for a club like Arsenal, who, who are looking for that top six, who are looking to challenge as champions, is different to a club like West Brom. While we were filming, we filmed this on a Wednesday, we found out that, that Bilic has been sacked. Like, harsh. Harsh. I think we probably all agree it's harsh. Yeah. But what are you saying Arsenal should, Arsenal should get Billy? Yeah, 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 no, I'm so amazing. No, <laughs> but, but the, the, they're in the season. same market for a manager now, aren't they, really? The, the, mm. the point I was making, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm saying Arsenal should get Allegri. Allegri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a decent little move. Yeah, that would be an amazing move. But, like, you understand the motives of a club like West Brom, who, who've just come into the league, to be like, OK, we're still down that end, and you know what the, the end goal is. It's just stay in the league at all costs, right? Arsenal... Supposedly, this is a, a bit of a project at the moment, trying to change the culture of the club. The culture of the club seems to be like getting sent off, like you know, players like Zaka. I mean, you would, have, you would imagine after the Pepe one, right? Arteta maybe has a quiet word with everyone about like being a bit more chill. And you then see he gets... as well, like he, he, Zaka was like the interview in the uh, pre-match. Um, what are they called? Program. Program. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's so long since you've seen them. <laughs> yeah, the pre-match program, and basically the line from it was like. Oh, I pride myself on my discipline and like, being a leader on the pitch. Can't write it. So, you yeah. can't write it. Well, they did write it. Though. Well, they did write it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting a new manager in, unless he just completely rejuvenates this, this squad, gets up Bamiang scoring again, like they're going to get left behind. They're going to struggle for top six. Why not leave it with Arteta? Give him a bit more time. They, he's won him a trophy. Let's not forget that as well. Yeah. You know. He won an FA, he still won an FA Cup. I mean, he's won more silverware than any Tottenham manager has in the last yeah, decade. I knew that was coming. Even just sat, <laughs> sat here, not saying anything, yeah. being quite polite, letting you speak. And just knew it was coming. Knew yeah. it was coming. Um, one thing <laughs> I think that has to be factored in when we talk about a manager going to Arsenal is the fan base. Now, I know that Arsenal Fan TV doesn't represent 95% of Arsenal fans, but sadly, the outside opinion is that that is what Arsenal fans are because there's no doubt about it that when it goes viral, that is what all Arsenal fans think. And it's toxic. It's really 
really bad. And I'm not saying Allegri is sitting there, you know, watching on it. a Sunday night <laughs> watching <laughs> highlights, but <laughs> the rest of football is. And Arsenal, I mean, just someone who lives in the Midlands, I've said it when Pippa was on the show, my mates and I thought that Arsenal Fan TV did represent a lot of Arsenal fans. And I think, like, genuinely, like, that needs to stop. Like, Arsenal, AFTV, I'm not, you know, I'm not calling them out, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> if they want to, if they want to progress as a club and not be this temper outfit that they are at the moment, that, for instance, has to stop because their fan base, for me, is probably the biggest negative. And I know that 95% of the fans aren't like that, but that is, that 5% is representing the other. But that's the important thing to note, I think, is that there probably is that 5% of a fan base in, in every club in the league, right? There is going to be a, a, a minority of fans who, who do feel like that about every manager, every decision, everything. But, you know, for whatever reason, they have become the beacon of it for their, their club. Why, I mean, why would Allegri come to a club where on a Sunday night after they've lost 1-0 to Everton, they've got some bald lad who looks like Voldemort <laughs> saying he's got to get out <laughs> and it's getting 3 million views on Twitter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't care what Voldemort thinks, but... <laughs> We do. I mean, I'm lapping it up, by the way. I, <laughs> I, I am waiting for, to see what Voldemort says on a, on a Sunday night. Oh, I started with you saying you're not going to call him out, but you sort of... No, I'm like not. I'm, just, just, saying, I'm like... just saying, Allegri, if Voldemort starts calling him out and this lad's getting three million views, for me, I'm fuming. So I'm like, yeah. I'm look, who, who are you calling yeah. me out? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure Voldemort will say to me, who are you calling <laughs> me out? Do you know what I mean? There's a but, feed chain, yeah. yeah. But, I, you know, I don't care what Voldemort thinks. <laughs> Well, we can't finish the show without seeing who won our four to score challenge. Graz and Nick were level on points. Who won? Let's go and find out. Okay, lads, so it's level. Uh, so I've got a tie break here for you. Okay. I'm going to show it you. Uh, Henners, you can just play along for fun. Uh, I'm having a great time. Did Kevin Nolan get sent off for this tackle or not? Nick is correct. <sighs> Nick. Is this week's the tiebreaker winner? Yes. So it's a hollow victory for me because it just means I'm in the mind of Mike Dean. Yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. that, is that really a win? Yeah. Well, that's all from us, folks. Another episode of Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. Thanks again to all the panellists on this week's show. I've got to remind you, we've got Christmas and New Year specials coming up, so keep your eyes peeled for those. But for now, enjoy your weekends, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>